Here's how the sustainability challenge will flow this week. Today is day one. It's a state of the sustainability union, if you will. In our second video today, it'll be an update on all of our most popular rating systems. Day two is all about carbon and measuring it. We're gonna dive deep into that subject. Days three and four are about BIM, digital twins, and the changing requirements of owners. We're gonna show you a new measurement tool and you'll have the opportunity to see how your projects measure up. And then day five, we're gonna put it all together. You know, the sustainable design, construction, and operations world is rapidly changing. And we hope with some of what you learned this week, you'll be ahead of the pack. Brian, you've chosen to make a career in green buildings, energy efficiency, so have I. Let's talk about the built environment. If we zoom out, it's still a big part of our overall global greenhouse gas emissions. Can you go over some of those statistics? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we, we know the figures. We know the statistics about buildings. 76% of all electricity in the U.S. is going to commercial buildings. 40% uh, of the associated greenhouse gas emissions of the entire United States. Again, the buildings, the commercial buildings we design and build. But worldwide, it's 37%. It's, uh, it's both a huge problem and, frankly, a very rich and focused opportunity. And thank you for being a part of our Sustainability Week. We're going to dive into this more, but let's continue the conversation around this zoomed out problem that we have. You know, this week we're going to talk about operating carbon and later and body carbon. But, but let's talk about efficiency, which is more on the operating carbon side of things. Uh, Brian, what are some things we're focused on being more efficient on and some of the benefits of an energy efficient or just a sustainable building? Oh, there's so many benefits. I mean, just statistically, green buildings consume 29 to 50 percent less energy than normal building stock. 40% less water. At the end of the day, they make 33 to 40% less carbon emissions than their standard counterparts, and they produce 50 to 70% less solid waste. Those are big numbers. And it's not just good by the numbers, it's literally good for business. Mm -hmm. Green buildings are lower cost to operate. Property managers, developers, investors, all those who choose to make commercial buildings more energy efficient can see huge cost savings. Building new green or even retrofitting buildings, it's fewer investments in utilities and expenses. It's financial benefits for the operators, financial benefits for the tenants. Uh, lead buildings have 20% lower maintenance costs mm. than their co-built counterparts. And then, of course, there are tax credits and incentives. Green buildings also increase asset value. They retain the property values over time, depreciate less quickly, and they're more likely to meet the growing demand of discerning tenants and investors. And they typically have higher occupancy rates with rents and sales prices potentially higher above market than non-green properties. Brian, there's a lot of targets for 2030 and 2050. It might seem like that's a ways away, but, but that 2030 one's not. And if we're not doing some things now, 2050 is going to be here before we know it. So can you kind of demystify some of these targets uh, that are being set by entire nations or companies or even real estate companies? You know, there's, there's a litany of green building standards out there. Uh, you know, Charlie's heard me say before that nobody knows what's going to end up being VHS and what's going to be Betamax by 2045 or 2030. And it's true. But in order to meet those 2030 and 2050 and other climate standards where emissions have to be reduced by 45% and be net zero in most cases by 2050, it's gonna take a building sector of designers, builders, and operators who are fully committed to reaching those goals. I like to say Blu-ray and HD DVD, Brian, and which one of those is gonna win out, but I like your analogy too. It's not just the targets that are sitting out there. At the end of the day, the conversation around environmental, social, and governance has gone from just being sort of in the fringe and corporate space to being the center spotlight, not just of the corporations, but the governments of the nations in which they operate and the general public that makes their market operations possible. They're lasered in asking, 
are we able to achieve the environmental, social, and governance standards that we're speaking out into the marketplace? Absolutely, Brian. I mean, ESG is booming. It affects every business, and it affects all of you watching in different ways. You know, a simple example, if we tie it back to the built environment, maybe even a lead project, and you need an environmental product declaration. Let's say you're a manufacturer that over the last five years you've really pushed off, oh, I don't need to do that. I don't need to have that additional cut sheet. I don't really need to put out my own ESG information. Well, now you could be losing bids because you actually don't have an EPD, an environmental product declaration, and now you're behind. Absolutely. So, Brian, let's talk about still kind of big picture, uh, even legislation we're seeing by some countries, some states. Um, you know, let's list off just a few. There's, there's many, but here's what we also see in the United States towards energy efficiency and maybe even green building. So can you take us through a few of the legislative moves that we've seen stack up over the last 10 years? Oh, absolutely. The tax benefits and the government incentives that give green buildings a greater opportunity are growing every day. Just a couple of months ago, the, the Climate Smart Buildings Initiative was funded. Uh, there's the 179D Energy Efficient uh, Commercial Building Tax Deduction. Uh, the Energy Investment Tax Credits writ large, the, the Better Buildings Initiative and the L Prize from the Department of Energy. Uh, and of course, the Accelerated Recovery Period for Depreciation of Smart Meters and Smart Grid mm -hmm. Systems. I'm sure there's a great initialism for that one. But at the end of the day, that's just in the US. Right. There's even more legislation that we're seeing emerge across Europe and local legislation in markets around the United States. And they're driving not just opportunity, but requirements that the winning designers of tomorrow's buildings will not just have to meet, but exceed in order to win. Make sure you're all reading up on some things happening in Europe. Like you mentioned, I was fortunate in May to go to GBCI Europe's Circle event, kind of Green Build Europe, and they really educated us on taxonomy and the European Green Deal. If you're doing the sustainability challenge with us this week, you may already know a lot of this, but we are making progress. Uh, Brian, how about on the efficiency side? Oh. Building efficiency has been one of the most exciting spaces in the marketplace. I mean, we all know even from our home environments that we've seen an 80% jump in the energy efficiency of lighting with the transition to LED. But I was just at the Association of Energy Engineers World Conference a couple of weeks ago, and there were LEDs that were being uh, displayed that were so efficient that I did a little quick math, and it actually would pay for itself to replace existing LEDs with those LEDs. Amazing. Uh, so, and those efficiencies are happening in air systems, in thermal envelopes of buildings, in lighting, and then, of course, in the way that we operate the building that responds to, let's not kid ourselves, dramatic swings in occupancy that are a part of our new normal today. There's innovations even within our green building rating system. So you're going to learn more about that in our next video with the latest with LEED and WELL and FITWELL and so many of the programs we use in all of our projects. Not just that, but more comprehensive capabilities for calculating carbon and the carbon footprint. Our experts, Christina Bach and Nick Casanis, will be able to take us through strategies and technologies that are actually aimed at lowering our carbon footprint. And then we're going to transition to the use of digital twins and even VR and AR. Yes, all of that coming this week and all of our bite-sized learning. Brian, so we're making progress. There's innovation left and right. There's amazing technology. There's raising the bar of building codes and energy codes. There's raising the bar of programs like LEED. It's a little harder to do LEED Platinum today than LEED Platinum five years ago, but, but how can we accelerate this and why do we need to accelerate this? I mean, at the end of the day, the opportunity is there, right? Today, only 1% of commercial buildings in the United States have a green certification. But the, the implication is that in reality, that's a small part of the overall equation. This is a, a, an opportunity that goes back to the, the very, very beginning. The, the design phase of the building is the opportunity to make the greatest impact in how we build buildings where people flourish and where the planet flourishes. You know, the further out vision is 
integrated systems. It's taking all of the pieces and bringing them together to achieve that next level of possibility, right? We all know that some of the best buildings are the ones where they are design build projects. And this is what we're talking about in sustainability. It's a design build sustainability. If we can apply all of the different innovations to an end to end process and designing, constructing and operating will be a lot closer to reaching our sustainability goals. In my network, as I've built my career on green buildings, I'm fortunate to be a part of the Lead Fellow Network. With our Green Building Matters podcast, I've interviewed 250 green building professionals all over the world. I've really had a front row seat to all of these advanced topics, and we've programmed that in this week to our learning. That's right. We know it's a complex and challenging problem. I know many of us, especially you, Charlie, have spent an entire career working to solve the problem. And I think that it's clear we're at the cusp of a major leap ahead of what is possible. So we know that most people don't have time to read, watch, and listen to everything that's out there, right? But this sustainability challenge, this is about streamlining that flood of information that's out there into content that lets you draw out the insights and the knowledge for how your firm can prepare for what's coming. By spending this week on the sustainability challenge, you're getting ahead of the pack on what will be the future requirements for sustainable design, construction, and operations. I encourage you to dig in and try the new tools we're about to show you. See what you can learn on your existing projects, but don't be afraid to apply new approaches to those next projects you have access to.